marking the inevitable passage of time. But while the clock mechanism in this tower can shift slightly with the conditions, those that run our computer systems are synced to atomic clocks. Gradually though, the rotation of the Earth falls out of sync with this atomic timekeeping. So the solution that scientists have come up with, every so often, add a leap second to the day. The last leap second in 2012 delayed one airline's flights and crashed some high-profile websites. Because the second has to be added manually, there's concern that this could happen again. It can't be programmed in because the Earth is quite irregular and not always predictable. For instance, a big earthquake, like the ones we've had in the past 10 years, changes the rotation rate of the Earth. And we haven't had one for three or four years, and that's why a leap second is needed now. While the speed of the Earth's rotation varies, an atomic clock has a regular pace. Leap seconds are just for the fact that overall, Earth time is slower than atomic time. Scientists continue to debate the issue of whether to keep adjusting the physical time our clocks are set to in this way, reconciling our unpredictable planet with the pace of atomic clocks. Meanwhile, though, much could happen in the last second of June. In a second, lightning can strike six times. An estimated 2.4 million emails are sent, and a humble bee beats its wings 270 times. Leap seconds have only been used as an adjustment since 1972. This one will be our 27th. But time has been under scrutiny since the development of the first clock technology that gave us a measure even more reliable than the Earth itself. And whether you believe we should stick to astronomical time as the ultimate reference, you'll have an extra second to think about it. Victoria Gill, BBC News.